Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for April 2019. This month, we're covering off on housing market trends through to the end of March, which shows a moderation in the rate of value decline, but a broadening in the geographic scope of weaker conditions. Although the CoreLogic National Hedonic Index Series trended lower in March, the actual rate of decline has been easing over the past three months. National dwelling values are down 0.6% in March, which was the smallest of the month-on-month -month decline since values fell by half a percent back in October last year. While the pace of falls has slowed in March, the scope of the downturn has become more geographically widespread. Dwelling values were down across six of the eight capital cities over the month, with Canberra values holding firm, while Hobart values were 0.6% higher. Outside of the capital cities, most of the rest of state regions also recorded a fall in values. The exceptions were regional Tasmania, where values were half a percent higher, and regional South Australia, where values were up by three tenths of a percent. The quarterly trend in dwelling values is showing a similar pattern, with six of the eight capital cities recording a fall in values over the March quarter, led by Darwin, which was down by 3.9%, followed by Melbourne, where the market was down by 3.4%, and Sydney, which recorded a 3.2% drop in values. National dwelling values have been trending lower for 17 months and have fallen by a cumulative 7.4% since peaking back in October 2017. Despite the broad-based weakness, the national index remains 15.9% higher relative to five years ago, highlighting that most property owners remain in a strong equity position. Markets where values peaked much earlier have shown a much more substantial downturn. In Darwin and Perth, where weak housing market conditions were driven by weak economic and demographic conditions post-mining boom, dwelling values have fallen by a cumulative 27.5% and 18.1% respectively since peaking in 2014. The silver lining here is that housing is now very affordable and first home buyers are proportionally much more active relative to other areas of the country. On the other hand, dwelling values remained at record highs across Hobart and regional Tasmania and only marginally lower across Canberra, Adelaide and Brisbane, as well as regional Victoria. Although housing market conditions remain relatively healthy in these regions, conditions have noticeably softened over the past 12 months, with values either slipping or the pace of growth slowing materially. In Sydney, the monthly rate of decline eased a little in March. However, with values down by 0.9% over the month, it's clear that conditions remain weak across Australia's largest housing market. The Sydney market has recorded a cumulative decline of 13.9% since values peaked in July 2017, with a larger 15.2% recorded for detached housing relative to units where values were down by 11% since peaking. With almost 28,500 properties advertised for sale at the end of March, overall listing numbers remain elevated, providing buyers with a great deal of choice and a strong negotiation position. Homes were taking an average of 74 days to sell over the March quarter, compared with 33 days a year ago. Overall, the housing market has recently shown some tentative signs that the downturn in dwelling values is losing some steam. Although this is a positive development, the outlook for the housing market will continue to be affected by uncertainty related to the federal election, to lending policies, and more broadly to domestic economic conditions. Federal elections generally cause some uncertainty, which is likely amplified more so this time around considering the potential for a change of government, which will also involve significant changes to taxation policies related to investment. No doubt some prospective buyers and sellers are delaying their housing decisions until after the election. However, there's no guarantee that certainty will improve post-election considering the impact of a wind back to negative gearing and a halving of the capital gains tax concession is largely unknown. It seems a reasonable assumption that removing an incentive from the marketplace would result in some downwards pressure on activity and prices for a period of time. If elected, the opposition have flagged that changes to the capital gains tax discount and negative gearing would take effect from January 2020. Another key factor in relation to the housing market will be credit availability. CoreLogic data tracking the number of housing valuation events, which provides a timely proxy for mortgage activity, has remained around 14% below activity from a year ago. A similar trend is confirmed within the less timely ABS housing finance data, which continued to show a reduction in both investor and owner-occupier lending through to the end of January. While this trend in weaker housing finance commitments is very much entrenched for investment lending, the sharp downturn in owner-occupier lending is more concerning. 
the value of owner-occupier lending is about 2.6 times higher than the value of an investment lending. So the substantial drop in owner-occupier mortgage commitments perhaps explains why the housing downturn is becoming more widespread. The value of owner-occupier housing finance commitments, excluding refinance loans, was down 17.1% compared with January last year, and investment credit was 24.6% lower. While there are headwinds for the housing market, other factors are likely to help to offset weakness, such as the high likelihood that the cash rate will be cut later this year, which may result in lower mortgage rates. While any cuts to the cash rate may not be passed on in full, a lower cost of debt will provide some positive stimulus for the housing market. Arguably, the stimulus won't be as effective as previous interest rate cuts due to the fact that high serviceability buffers applied to borrowers whereby lenders are still required to assess serviceability at a mortgage rate of at least 7%, despite mortgage rates which are now available around the 4% mark or even lower. While falling home values are a negative for homeowners, improved housing affordability is the silver lining to this downturn. As dwelling prices trend lower or level out, household incomes are edging higher and mortgage rates remain around the lowest level since the 1960s. First home buyers are clearly taking advantage of the improved levels of affordability and less competition in the market. With the federal budget handed down this month, the federal election to be held next month, and the likelihood of lower interest rates later this year, there's a lot happening that could affect the housing dynamic. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the news and the latest housing market research, make sure you check out our website at www.corelogic.com.au.